It was white. It felt cold and heavy. The surfaces were without apology, bold, pure, perfectly proportioned, coherent, and effortless. There was an honest connection between its blemish-free surfaces and the materials from which it was made. No part appeared to be either hidden or celebrated, just perfectly considered and completely appropriate in the hierarchy of the product's details and features. At a glance, you knew exactly what it was and how to use it. It felt complete and it felt right. So that was Johnny Ive, in his own words, talking about a juicer from the 1970s. And what if I told you that Apple's entire design language of the Ive era was influenced from that innocuous juicer? I mean, Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. And we have, you know, always been shameless about stealing great ideas. Apple's never been afraid to steal for their own benefit. And I think the perfect example of that goes back to the late 70s, early 80s with Xerox. Steve Jobs and a few Apple engineers were invited into Xerox R&D lab where they saw Xerox Park, and it was the very first time Steve Jobs, really anybody, had seen a graphical user interface with a mouse. And ultimately that graphic user interface changed computing. It made its way into the Lisa, the Macintosh, and now computers and tablets all over the world. It's a pretty common argument among tech historians to say that Apple owes their success to a few engineers from Xerox in the late 70s. But what if I told you Apple owes more to one German industrial designer than any one person or company in its history? He's known as one of Germany's top talents. Products made by Dieter Rams are present in millions of households. Meet Dieter Rams. If you haven't heard his name, you've definitely seen his work in one form or another. So Rams was the chief design officer at Braun from 1961 until 1995. And now a lot of us think of Braun as just a razor company. But in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, they were so much more than that. They were the pinnacle of design. They were making clocks, music cabinets, radios, and even a juicer, most of which were designed by Dieter Rams himself. He's really well regarded as one of the world's most influential and award-winning designers ever. Even today, many consider Rams' work at Braun instrumental in the design language that we see all around us, not just in our tech. Dieter Rams wrote the book on good design principles, literally. His 10 principles on good design sound like they are exactly out of Apple's playbook. According to Dieter Rams himself, good design should be innovative, make a product useful, aesthetic, make a product understandable, unobtrusive, honest, long-lasting, thorough to the last detail, environmentally friendly, Good design is as little design as possible. So when you hear these concepts, each one screams Apple. You could think of a different Apple product associated with each of those principles. So me telling you this is one thing. If you want proof, let's compare some of Bronze products to some of Apple's. So here is the original iPod. It's iconic, it's a thousand songs in your pocket. And here is the Braun T3 radio. So here's the original Cheese Grater Mac Pro, and here's a Braun radio. And if you get close and you look at the holes in the radio, it almost looks like a select shot taken directly from the Mac Pro. Pretty recognizable, it's a relatively modern iMac, and here's a Braun speaker. All it's missing is some Thunderbolt ports in the back. So remember this guy? This is the old Firewire iSight camera. Pretty awesome for the time. And here is an old Braun IR emitter. And this, let's call it influence, goes beyond hardware. We even saw it in Apple software. Maybe the most recognizable 
is the calculator on the old OG iPhone. This is what it looked like, you probably remember it. And here's a calculator made by Braun, designed by Dieter Rams. So if we throw it back to iOS 7 and look at the world clocks, and then we look at clocks that Ram designed for Braun, they look very, very similar. And some sources have claimed that Apple even used the exact same fonts for the numbers that Rams used. So in previous versions of iOS, if you're listening to a podcast, you got kind of a digital representation of a reel-to-reel -reel system. It actually looks like the reel-to-reel -reel system that Braun came out, you guessed it, designed by Rams. So you look at these designs and it's very clear that Johnny Ive's Apple design language was absolutely inspired by what Dieter Rams did at his time at Braun. But if you take it a step further, it kind of begs the question, is this just an homage or is it a straight up ripoff? And the real answer is it's kind of neither of those things. A big definition of who you are as a designer, it, it, it's, it's the way that you look at the world. And um, I guess it's one of the sort of curses of what you do is that you're constantly looking at something and thinking, why, why, why is it like that? So if you look at Apple's current lineup and even their future lineup, there's a really strong Dieter Rams influence. And you might think that Apple and Johnny Ive in particular may want to hide this or even deny it, but it's actually quite the opposite. Johnny Ive has been pretty vocal about his admiration and respect for the work of Dieter Rams. So a few years ago, there was a book written on Dieter Rams. And I'll give you one guess who wrote the foreword for that book, obviously none other than Johnny Ive. And in that foreword, he talked about his admiration for Rams' work, but also has something as innocuous as a juicer in his childhood home, it turned out to be designed by Rams and put out by Braun, sort of set off his love for design and how he used to look and admire that juicer and start to imagine other products. But one kind of fun fact, that book that I've wrote the forward for actually looks identical to Apple's own design book. And so that, that forward certainly is not the first time that Ives have shared his admiration for Dieter Rams' work. In fact, Ives went on to say that Rams' work is, and I quote, beyond improvement. And for a designer, that is crazy high praise. And for anything to be considered beyond improvement, it's pretty staggering. Ives talked about Rams on other occasions as well. And there's one quote that I think stands out to me more now than it really has before. The fact that we know Rams primarily by his beautiful engineered and mass manufactured products, rather than his credo of good design, speaks volumes about his extraordinary collaborations within Braun. In defining individual products, he also helped define Braun. So that sounds a lot like how people view Johnny Ive now. His products aren't just Johnny Ive products, they are Apple. They're how Apple is viewed, how Apple is revered, and they've become synonymous with Apple as a whole. So it shows his collaborations that he's had in the past with Steve Jobs, and of course the collaborations recently with Tim Cook. So you might think that Dieter Rams might be upset or envious or some other negative emotion towards Johnny, Ive, and Apple, but actually it's quite the opposite. Rams has gone on record with his admiration for the company and the designer, and how they used those 10 principles to put out beautiful products that ultimately ended up changing consumer electronics and a little bit of the world. And just as Steve loved ideas and loved making stuff, he treated the process of creativity with a rare and a wonderful reverence. So Rams obviously has a ton of respect for, for Johnny Ive and for Apple. And he actually gave a quote a few years ago that kind of in modern context illuminates things really better than ever before. I have always observed that good design can normally only emerge if there is a strong relationship between an entrepreneur and the head of design. At Apple, the situation exists between Steve Jobs and Johnny Ive. And obviously at this point in the video is clearly conjecture on my part. When you look back on the history of Steve Jobs and Walter Isaacson's biography of him, you could hear and see the importance of design. Even parts of products that consumers would never see, Jobs spent time and a lot of money and resources making sure those 
were aesthetically beautiful. And presumably, it was that dedication to design that led to Johnny Ives' rise and their working relationship between those two men. When Steve Jobs passed away and Tim Cook came on, he's a different human being. Mandarin style's different, focus is different, like any two people. And it could certainly be postulated that that lack of focus on the intricacies of design, again, parts that people might not see, wasn't what Tim Cook was focused on. And Johnny I, being a design guy, that's where he lives and breathes. So you take this quote from Rams and you put it in more context and perhaps it could illuminate why Johnny I decided to leave Apple. It's really important in a product to have a sense of the hierarchy of what's important and what's not important by removing those things that are all vying for your attention. So if you look at Ram's quote even a little more, good design happens when there's a great relationship between entrepreneur and head of design. And if you look at some of Apple's recent products when there was sacrificing function for form, maybe it's fair to extrapolate is due to that relationship between Johnny Ive and Tim Cook. I mean, the examples that come to mind, the, the butterfly keyboard on the MacBooks, charging the original Apple Pencil through the iPad's lightning port, charging the Magic Mouse through the lightning port on the bottom of the device. For me personally, the Apple TV remote, minimal ports on Macs, removal of the headphone jack on the iPhone. It's a pretty long, extensive list. What Apple's products are gonna look like now post Johnny Ive is an interesting discussion. Now clearly there are Ive designs still in various forms of development, probably for the next half a decade. But after that point, what is Apple's design language going to look like? Are Ram's principles that Johnny Ive implemented in Apple, are they ingrained now in the fabric of Apple that post his departure, products will still look as if they were designed by Ive or, or maybe even Ram's himself? I don't know the answer to that, but I think what we're going to see are products that put a little more emphasis on function and slightly less on form.